Okay, everybody, so I just heard an extremely disturbing video, and I'm, I'm not understanding what these people are not getting. Here's the danger. Here's the danger of the sleep. Understand that, that Satan's only goal is to keep us away from God. That's, that's all he's trying to do here. Um... In the sleep, we have blinders over the eyes. Uh, we're, we're not hearing what, what, the, what the other person who is trying to give you the truth is actually saying. And it's very dangerous when you're not open, when you're not open to hearing what another person is saying. Um, more or less, Satan's one. So now uh, I'm going to try this once again. This is about the fourth or fifth time I'm doing this. But I, I think it is necessary. It is necessary because it's dangerous what these people are doing out here. So this person was actually screaming. Do you think that by your legalism you are going to get to salvation? It's not what I've ever said. That is not what I've ever said. And this is, in fact, what the sleep is. You hear, you hear things in the negative. You're hearing to respond. You're not hearing to understand. This is what the problem is. And this is the sleep. Let's take a look. What is legalism? Because these people throw these terms around all the time. What is legalism? I Googled it. Legalism Theology by Wikipedia. In Christian theology, legalism or nomism is a pejorative term applied to the idea that by doing good works or by obeying the law, a person earns merit, a person earns and merits salvation, which is what this guy was screaming about. That's never what I've said. That's never what I've said. I said we are saved by grace. But we are commanded to transcend the world. That's what I've been saying out here over and 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 over again. So let's go to my favorite page. Got questions. Why do we still sin after salvation? And this is the whole point. This is the whole point. And you will understand in my video that I made this morning, what did I say? I said, I keep crying to the Holy Spirit to please show me, please show me what I had to do to fully trust the Lord. You see, we have to do this. We have to do this, but there's no way that we can do it without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit. We have to let go of everything of the world. It's what we're commanded to do. But we cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. Nor are we able to have any veils lift without the Holy Spirit. Nor are we able to see our blind spots without the Holy Spirit. This is where the work comes in. So let's, let's see what, these, uh, what this article says. Why do we still sin after salvation? Salvation begins the moment we receive, by faith, God's offer of forgiveness through the death and resurrection of his son, Jesus. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 and John 1, 12. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. In fact, it is these pastors out here who are doing the boasting, not me. No, I'm actually doing the crying and saying, Holy Spirit, please show me. That's actually what I'm doing. But that's obviously not what this person heard. And this is the danger of what is happening out here. John 1.12 says, 
but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. Jesus called it being born again. In repenting, giving up our old life, we received the new life Jesus purchased for us with his blood. We are washed clean and God chooses to remember our sins no more. And I've said all of these things. But we soon notice that our propensity to sin is still a part of us. How can that be? Since we are a new creature in Christ, we still sin because we, though forgiven, are still fallen human beings. Because why? What did I tell you? Because the only thing that we know is the world. Which is why Jesus told us to transcend the world. The world is synonymous with sin. The world is synonymous with sin. The world is also synonymous with the psychological mind. This is your inner world. That is our outer world. The personhood, the selfish aspect of us, because we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and we're saved, it, it, it does not mean that this selfish aspect of us is gone. It does not mean that, that our uh, dependence, reliance, and love of the world has gone either. This is all we know, which is why we have to break away from it, which this person who's screaming about legalism here is so clueless. He's actually dangerous for people out here. This is exactly what Satan wants everyone to hear. You don't have to do a thing. You could go on sinning. You're saved by grace. You could go on sinning. You could stay of the world. It's okay. It's okay. When these people are the ones who are actually of the world, and, and they, they pick and choose verses in the Bible that they want to follow, and, and they, they overlook others that may be too tough for them to live through, like transcending the world. Okay? You guys, this is, the, this is the importance of you guys getting in that Bible yourself. Do not rely on anyone to give you what the Bible says. You've got to get in that Bible yourself. Salvation breaks the power that sin once had over us. We were slaves to sin and served it willingly. Romans 6, 20 to 23, 7, 14 to 15. While slaves to sin, it was impossible to please God. Regardless of how often we turned over a new leaf, straightened up, went to church, or performed righteous deeds, our souls were still enslaved to unrighteousness, and we stood as condemned before God. Upon surrender of our lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, we became God's sons and daughters. And here is the point that I'm making out here. The majority of people that, that go to church and are going through a bad time and they're looking for God, um, and they say the prayer to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they have not surrendered their life to God. They have said a prayer because they want their pain to stop. This is what everybody's missing out here. Surrender is a process. This is what the path is all about. This is what the path is all about. Because you've got to pull away from all of your attachments of the world. That's all you know. You've got to pull away from all of your attachments. You've got to pull away from that desire for name and fame to become rich and powerful in the world. You've got to pull away from all of that. That is a part of the surrendering process. Do you understand? So when you say that prayer and you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you haven't even started surrendering yet. And this is the truth that everyone needs to know out here. Not these lies that you're saved by grace, which you are, but that you're saved by grace, but then you don't have to change anything about yourself. And anyone who tells you that you do have to change something about yourself, 
were called legalists. Not true. Not true. You see, I follow exactly everything that Jesus told, told me to do. And I'm also in oneness with him in the spirit realm. I have transcended the world. And this is what these sleepers don't understand. So in their sleep and their arrogance, they will sit here and call me a legalist while they're, while they're leading sleeping Christians astray. Telling them that they don't have to change their behavior. I'm also going to get to some Bible verses about this in a minute. This is very sad. Upon surrender of our lives to the Lordship of Jesus, we became God's sons and daughters. But just as children sometimes disobey their parents as they grow, God's children sometimes disobey Him. We rebel, get angry, or doubt for a while. The difference is we can no longer live lifestyles of sin because our nature has changed. And this is the key. This is the key. For the most part, our natures do not change because we have not truly accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Yet we go around saying we're saved and we're Christians and we're still hanging out on the bars in the bars on the weekend, drinking, getting drunk, fornicating, lying, stealing. We're still doing all these things. Go to the prisons and ask how many people in there who are Christians. See how many people raise their hands. Well, if they were Christians, they would not be sitting in a jail cell because they would have surrendered their life and they would have turned away from their, their, their old way of living. You see, this is a process. This is what the path is all about. This is what the narrow path is. Is that you keep your eyes on Jesus. And you do exactly what Jesus told us to do. It doesn't mean we stop living. And it doesn't mean I'm doing this myself. And that it's going to earn me salvation. No, I'm being obedient. And I am surrendering this life to Jesus Christ. I'm doing exactly what he told me to do. And there's no way that I could ever do this without the help of the Holy Spirit. This is what I've been saying out here. A fish may long to live on a beach, but once it has uh, flipped itself onto the sand, it wants nothing but to return to the water. Because its nature is not designed for dry land. And what did I say? If you haven't begun to feel intense pain from tearing yourself away from the world. Tearing this personhood away from you. Then you haven't even started to wake up yet. This is exactly what's being said here. This, this waking up process goes against our very nature. It goes against... The very nature of the personhood, which is the only reality that we know until we wake up. It is a very, very excruciatingly painful process. And it cannot be completed without the help of the Holy Spirit. The nature of those indwelt by the Holy Spirit is to live in righteousness. We may flip ourselves into sin at times, but we can't survive there. The new nature thrives in righteousness and obedience to God. The degree to which we allow the Holy Spirit access to every area of our lives is the degree to which we live as God intended us to live. I'm going to read that one more time because this sentence right there encapsulates everything that I have been saying out here. And it shows the dangerousness of what this person put out here. The, uh, the delusion of what these people are, are spewing out to the, to the sleepers out here. This is exactly what Satan wants you to hear. Is what these people are putting out here. The new nature thrives in righteousness and obedience to God. The degree to which we allow the Holy Spirit access to every area of our lives is the degree to which we live as God intended us to live. To the praise of God's glory after we are saved, God deals with our sin differently than he did before we were saved. 1 John 
1 1 John 1 9 tells us that we can confess our sin and be forgiven confession means we humbly agree with God about how bad sin is we admit we were wrong and ask his forgiveness the awareness of our sin and the confession of it should be a regular practice and this is what I've said also the sins that we all committed in the sleep before we were saved which is done by grace and faith God has washed them away from from us we're starting with a clean slate anything after that we must repent of as we are continuing the process of transcending the world and now people like this person who put out this video um, it is a little difficult for people like these to actually transcend the world this is why Jesus said it is the narrow path and very few people find it this is why because it is excruciatingly painful The first of Martin Luther's 95 Thesis says, When our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said repent, he intended that the entire life of believers should be repentance, should be turning away from the world. And this is exactly what he told us to do. Turning away from our sin, which is the world. God can pardon us and maintain his justice because our sin was already paid for by Jesus. There is no need to punish us because he has already punished his son. As we grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we overcome besetting sins, peterless steps we can take in developing our new nature and ends with the promise that if we do these things, we will never stumble. Our holiness is the goal, but John acknowledges that we still sin. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. God's desire for us is that we not sin. And one day our sanctification will be complete. And this is the process that I'm completing right now while this person is screaming that I'm a legalist. Okay? No, this is massive, massive, massive sleep. And it's obvious this person has not even started the journey yet. He has not, not located the, the narrow path, which is very sad. But, but what's even sadder is that he's, he's proclaiming this stuff, this delusion, on a page with a lot of followers. This is the danger of this stuff. Because he listened to respond and to attack rather than to hear and to learn. But until that time, we still inhabit fallen bodies in a fallen world, and we struggle with the flesh sometimes, some, and sometimes lose the battle, but we will not be lost. Jesus himself intercedes for us as our high priest. Romans 8.34, as usual, this will be in the description. Next, what does the Bible say about repeating sin? Hebrews 10, 26 to 27. For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, after we've been saved, we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. If we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. Hear that loud and clear, people. This is about the fifth time I'm reading this. There no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. You can lose your salvation. But a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. So it's, it's talking about, if we go on deliberately sinning after receiving the knowledge of truth, so it's talking about believers, it's talking about believers, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. Jesus, you can, you can no longer say 
that Jesus died on the cross for you and your sins are forgiven because you have chosen to follow the dark one. There is work that every single person out here must do to renounce the world, renounce their sin, and peel away this personhood. We not only have the outer world to, to transcend, most importantly, we have this inner world. It's this inner world that, that is the hardest for us because it's our psychological mind, it's our thoughts, it's our belief system that we had ever since we were born on this planet. We were fed all the concepts in Satan's kingdom that we have believed was truth. We have to transcend all of it. We have to break all attachments. Everything that the world has said was good and successful and, and right. We understand in the existential reality that it's all not of God. It is not of God. We have to transcend all of it. Break every attachment, lust, the seven deadly sins, all of it. We have a lot of work to do. And no, we can't do it without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one here helping us. This is why the Holy Spirit is here. He is helping us. He's guiding us. He's lifting veils. He's showing us our blind spots. And once he shows us our blind spot, it is up to us to do the work to break the attachment, transcend that, that, that negative belief system, whatever we have to do to get rid of it. Because if we go on continuously, deliberately sinning, you will lose your salvation. And don't believe me. It's right in the Bible. Hebrews 10, 26 to 27. There you will find it. Romans 7, 15. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not, I, I do, not do what I want but I do the very thing I hate. Okay? And, th and this is because we're always battling the flesh until we actually wake up. And no, this can never be done without the Holy Spirit. 2 Peter 2, 20-22 For if after they have escaped the, the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them to have never known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. What the true proverb says has happened to them. The dog returns to its own vomit and the sow after washing herself returns to wallow in the mire. This is a constant daily thing that we must do. And um, this, this is why very few people find the narrow path. Because nobody wants to do the work. And the work is ex extremely, extremely, excruciatingly painful. Until you get past it. But the Holy Spirit is here helping you the whole time. And this is why he is here with us. He is not here with us so we can puff up our egos showing signs and wonders. Okay? I I'm going to tell you something. You know, Jesus did not speak just to hear himself talk. As I read to you in, in my last video, Jesus spoke the words that the Father told him to speak. As, as then he said, when he went back to the Father, he was going to send a helper who will not speak his own words, but he will speak the words of the Father. See, the Holy Spirit is doing the same thing. God is still on the throne. Jesus did not say one word that was not told to him to say by the Father. So who is anyone out here to pick and choose what verses of the Bible they want to follow because it makes their life easy?
you know, for me, a legalist is someone who follows the Bible letter for letter to the point where um, it keeps them in the sleep because they're all about religion. It, it's not about transcending the world. And as you transcend the world, you're, you're, coming, you're coming out of the personhood. You're coming out of this selfishness person and you're going you're 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 transforming from the caterpillar into the butterfly you're going out of the personhood which is the caterpillar and you're going into the spirit man which is the butterfly and it's literally not about you anymore it's not about you anymore it's only about what the father wants And you do exactly what you're being instructed to do by, by the by the Holy Spirit. This is all there is. This is why I will not ever listen to any sleeper out here. Ever. Ever. I'm going to start that again. 2 Peter 1, 4-11. By which he has granted us to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with affection, affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the the other the other thing these people are doing in the sleep out here, when they hear that they, that they are fruitful, they're thinking that that they they have these huge ministries and they have uh they have all this wealth it's not about that that stuff is all of the world that's the stuff we're supposed to be transcending the fruitfulness is that you are transcending the world you are thinking of yourself less and thinking of others more you are able to show other people love this is the fruits that the lord is talking to you about because it's all of the spirit it's not of the flesh it's of the spirit and this is the mistake that these sleepers make because they are asleep they still believe they are the flesh they still believe they are this body and the psychological mind they 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 confuse these things with being of the world which is exactly what jesus told us to transcend romans 6 12 let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral or idolaters or adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality. Matthew 7, 21 to 23, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And let's get this clear right now. The one who does the will of my Father. What did the Father say? Have no idols before him. You ought to love him first and foremost. Then you shouldn't be chasing the things out in the world. You shouldn't be chasing name and fame. You shouldn't be chasing money. You shouldn't be hating on everybody out here. The one who does the will of my Father, because the will of the, of the Father has all to do with the spiritual aspect of us, that we are to get rid of this selfish flesh nature of us and to not be of the world. That is the will of the Father. And once again, these sleepers out here believe that it's all signs and wonders, that that is the will of the Father. That they have to be traveling all over the place. That that is the will of the Father. And they're missing out on the point. That's not of the will of the Father. That is a part of the will of the Father. But they've totally missed out 
on everything else. They will be the people that Jesus turns away. They have not found the narrow path yet. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Now, what is lawlessness? It is the fact that you have not kept the commandments that Jesus has left for us, which is to love your neighbor as yourself, which is to not have idols which includes idolizing yourself as the anointed one, idolizing money, idolizing the world that you want so much power in the world, your greed, everything, everything that I have been speaking about out here. That is the will of the Father. And these people got it all at, well, I've been saying this nonstop a thousand times already. The existential truth is the complete opposite of the world's truth. And as you can see, they're still stuck on the world's truth. They don't understand the existential truth, which is why they're out here constantly attacking me. Go figure. I am going to put this in the description for you. Um, I have to keep coming back with these, with, even if it's the same video, I'm going to keep making it. This is way too important. This is way too important. I, I don't know how many thousands of people are listening to these exact lies all over this Christian faith by sleepers who have not even started waking up yet. And, and, and they're out here calling prophets who are giving you the truth. They're calling us every name in the book so that you will not listen to us. And... I'm going to tell you, this guy here, it's just vulgar. It's vulgar. He's actually yelling, are you a legalist that you think you have to do all the works that you're going to get your salvation? It's obvious he has not heard a word that I said. He is comatose and asleep. But the biggest problem is his page has millions of followers and he's feeding this crap to everyone who hears what's being put out on this page. This is what you all need to be woken up about. Understand the seriousness of you personally, not knowing God's word yourself, that you should not rely on anyone out here to give you the meaning of the Bible. You need to get in that Bible yourself and ask the Holy Spirit to take the veil off your eyes so that you can understand it and then help you to apply it to your life. And you need to keep moving in that direction. That is the narrow path. And don't ever look to the left or the right. You just keep looking at Jesus. You just keep looking at Jesus. You guys have a blessed day.